four. Week four of Golf Workouts. Getting ready for the season for 2022. Let's see how this works out. Welcome back to the McGolf Shop. Jim McCleary here, and this is the Golf Workouts getting ready for 2022. And the things I'm doing, you can follow me along and just see how how all this stuff's working out in order to get better, right? The idea here is to, I want to pass the PGA PAT, which is the physical aptitude test, and I just want to score lower scores, right? I want to be able to beat my buddies. <laughs> that's really where I'm at. And so that's what we're doing. Got picked up by Dr. J.P. Guidry and on Twitter, and we're going to see that here in a second. And and these, these workouts are actually... Uh, I want they're they are demanding enough to see results, and they're not so intrusive enough that it takes up all of your time. I, I'm, I'm going to keep harping on this, all right? Because you know we talk about workouts being this just just demanding, got to do, got to go, got to go, got to go. And what I have is a lot of daily mobile, daily mobility exercises that, along with other ones, and in order to free up the body in order to be able to make a better motion. That's what we're trying to do. You know, we've been talking about all the exercises I haven't showed you yet, but this week what I want you to do is I want you to meet the man that's helping me along, Dr. J.P. Goodry. Now, before all this, please, if you would, like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. It should be down here, somewhere down there. In order for you to get more of these videos when they drop, you can come along, see some more stuff when we talk about golf club repair, golf club reviews, you know, that kind of stuff. Or, if you would, on Mondays we have a live stream, and it's at 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time, or 17.30, um, and we just talk about golf club fittings, repairs, opinions, and, we just, and it's a good conversation with people from around the world. So come join us uh, on YouTube at Golf Custom Clubs at 17.30. This time, this episode right here, this is week four again, like we talked about, week four, and... We're going to talk to the guy that's giving us exercises. So let's go see him. So, okay, guys, we are here with Dr. John. Is How you doing? Good. And like I told you guys in the very first uh, video that he was kind enough to search out and look for some folks to do a program. And apparently he was silly enough to select me. And now we're going to... Uh, uh, we're going to talk about this. So we've been into this program. We're getting into what my week four would be. And, uh, and you know, you guys have seen the transitions of the things that I've done. And, and now we figure it's time to introduce the man. And we'll go from there. So I'm going to let it. He's going to introduce himself. I'll talk about himself. So you guys get a better feel of where I've been and where I'm going. So let, who, yeah. tell us about yourself. <laughs> All right. Well, I appreciate you having me. Uh chatting with me today. So my name is Dr. John Paul Guidry. I'm a uh, physical therapist by trade, got a doctorate in physical therapy. Um, you know, I, I've been in the career, I guess, about 15 years now. Spent the early part of my career in just general kind of outpatient uh, rehab, back pain, surgeries, sports injuries, things like that. And about 10 years ago, I got certified through uh, Titleist Performance Institute. With their uh, fitness certification, I've gone through the second level of that as well. And so at that time, I started kind of doing some golf-specific rehab, fitness performance training on the side and slowly built up that business enough for where it's become full-time um, and was able to drop the, the other stuff and not have to deal with it, the headaches of insurance and all the, the, the BS that goes along with that. But uh, so... I've been for the, about the past seven, eight years full time working with golfers, both in person in my uh, uh, clinic here in uh, Mandeville, Louisiana, and then online through my app. Uh, I've got clients all over the U.S. I've got probably eight to 10 international clients in that. Um, and so I work with golfers of all levels, all ages, from the standpoint of recovery from injury, aches, pains, getting back to golf after surgery. Uh, as well as just kind of pure performance training. So swing speed is probably the biggest thing golfers come to me for uh, from a performance standpoint. But, you know, mobility, longevity, 
aging golfers wanting to stay in the game and stay competitive, you know, weight loss, all kind of the general fitness aspects along with that. Um, and so that's what I've been doing for the past, you know, seven, eight years or so. You know, you hit on one that I'd never really thought about, but, you know, I do a live stream on Mondays and we talk to a lot of people around the world. And I had, there's a guy in Sweden right now that just got a, uh, his shoulder injured and he's coming back from it. We have another guy that's in uh, Cincinnati that's been a customer of mine with a knee replacement. And another guy north of me, knee replacement. We're and, sh and we're talking about all these, you know, shoulders and knees, basically the big thing. And we mm -hmm. were talking about the the trust factor once you've done all the, you know, you've done the therapy, the doctors cut you loose, but you just quite haven't broken through that trust factor on your own self and you because you've developed bad habits because you're protecting yeah. yourself and you got to get out of that kind of thing how, how do you do you see folks do that a lot is that something oh, how, how do you break through something like that 100 percent. i mean it's it's i would say it's more common than not especially with major things like that so joint replacement surgeries you know knee and hips you kind of have, you know, the way I phase it is you have your kind of acute rehab, which is your typical rehab. So you're trying to restore your normal range of motion, strength, get back to walking, get back to day-to-day -day activities, you know, and then for golfers or anybody that's trying to return to some other higher level activity, there's the next level. And you kind of hit the, the nail on the head with that, that kind of protectiveness is, you know, I've, I've seen golfers, let's say that have zero pain, you know, the knee feels great, but then you put them on video and let's say it's their lead knee and they're getting no weight shift onto that lead leg and not even really realizing they're doing it. And it is a habitual thing, right? you know, and a lot of it goes back to how long they had pain before surgery, the recovery process, all that, but the body kind of relearns how to move. And so if you were playing golf on a bum knee, chances are, you were protecting around that knee with your swing. And just because you fix the knee and even resolve the pain, those movement patterns don't just all of a sudden, you know, reappear back to normal. So, you know, part of what I do at that point, once we get to that point, you know, we're continuing to maybe get to another level of strength. Obviously we're looking at the other areas of the body, the hips, the thoracic spine, the ankles, the areas around the knee, how they move. And then we're starting to train maybe some, golf specific movement patterns on getting that weight shift or, you know, whatever it may be that is not showing up in the swing, you know, usually in lower body, it's generally going to show up in weight shift in the shoulder. You know, you're going to have that reluctancy to kind of externally rotate and especially in our trail shoulder and push it to that end range. So that's going to put us more into that dumping it steep over the top move. So kind of they basically they get comfortable in like the, the middle ranges of the joint they are afraid to push through those extremes. And so we have to get stronger and improve mobility and just re-educate and reinstall those movement patterns in those, those ranges. Well, I tell you what, from the exercises you've given me, and we were talking about that a little bit earlier, that, you know, the very first, the very first exercise, you know, laying down and, and getting that twisting, I thought, oh, this is no big deal. And all of a sudden I'm, you know, a foot from the floor <laughs> where I'm supposed <laughs> to be flat and you know, three to four weeks into it. And now I'm, now I'm able to do that and, and make that turn. And oh, it's almost an immediate impact into the quality of the swing. So even just stretches are, are just been a, a real plus for this whole entire endeavor so far. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if you, if you I always say, look, if your body can't do something physically, it doesn't matter how hard you're trying to do that, you know, in the golf swing or any other athletic motion, you're, you're not going to get there. So you're either going to be limited or you're going to start building some compensatory patterns around that. You know, if it's a rotational thing and you can't rotate, you know, you're going to see people sliding or standing up early, extending those type of things to feel like they're finishing that backswing, um, you know, lifting the arms, you know, tons of things that we can do to, feel like we're making that full turn right but once that body stops we're not making that turn anymore now we're going into some other movement pattern that then we have to kind of regather to get everything back on plane and try to find the golf ball so um you know that's the importance of that and like you said it doesn't you know in a short period of time you can make some big changes you know in those areas for sure 
Well, we're seeing it. Well, I'm seeing it. I'm happy so far. Like we were talking, if I keep making that, wouldn't that be a neat little goal? One, one yard a week. <laughs> one yard a week. That 14 yards at the end of the thing, buddy. And I'm, I'm uh-huh. tell you what, that's massive. We'll see what happens. So you, you, you mentioned earlier about, you know, you have your practice and you have that app and and i'm on the app and i am not using it to its fullest just as of yet uh, but and there's a it, guys if you're out there and you try that there is a truckload of information to be had on this app the one thing that i truly got away that i got back from it was the the app and this thing whether you're sending out an email or the machine or whatever but there's something like every day right and it and it just it clicks is like, oh yeah, I got to go do that. Oh yeah, I got to try this. Oh yeah, I got it. I thought that was the biggest bunch of baloney on the planet until it started showing up. And now uh-huh. I'm like, now I'm like cooking and I get back home and I get on the internet and I'm like, okay, oh, there's, there's Dr. John's thing. Let's see what he's got to say today. Da, 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 da. All right. Well, got to go get my clothes on and start doing my stuff and it works out. So it's really, I didn't think that from a motive, I didn't think it would be much from a motivational aspect but it is. I don't know if that was truly designed, but it works. Yeah. I mean, it's just reminders. It's little nudges for that accountability. Uh, you know, and, and I always tell people, you know, obviously the knowledge and the exercises and all this is what I provide, but you know, the, the bigger part of what I, what I provide from a coach is, is that accountability. You know, if you really want to, you can get on Google and find, you know, search golf performance training golf fitness training and find something it's probably you know relatively decent you know as far as just like what to do but then can you make yourself do that you know and and for the majority of people in my experience everybody needs some kind of accountability i have a coach that i work with solely for that reason um you know because there i go through periods where i can motivate myself and i go through periods where it's like i find myself it's kind of slacking off and getting away from my, my consistency. And so I reach out to, I have a few coaches that are, you know, in this sphere that I'm friends with them say, Hey, look, man, you know, I need you to kick me in the ass for the next 16 weeks and get me back on track. And so it's not the knowledge standpoint. I don't need them for that. I just need someone that I know I have to report to that is going to be checking in on me, going to be sending me reminders that, you know, it's that little thing, like when I'm thinking like, ah, I don't really want to do it today. And like you said, it pops up on the screen or on the phone. And it's maybe that little bit of a nudge to say, okay, yeah, I can't, you know, I got to show up basically. Right. And i tell you what, if, we, if there was any model for, we'll call it um, uh, chaos in the chaos in the system, you know, we talked again, my very first week was six. So I just delayed it for that. And then got sick again a little bit later and just pushed through that. And then I thought, well, geez, am I ever going to, am I ever going to get on like a roll, right? Where I can just get into a groove and, and you see behind me, we just had these guys installed yesterday. So I had to take my entire fitting room, push it out that way. My entire golf shop, push it out for some other. (laughs) And I spent the last two days putting, well, putting it all back together in order to make room so I could go. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> go do all this. I gotta get this thing fixed so I could go do my stuff yeah and, uh, and it, it's just so I I've done just about everything to get every to I've created just about every reason not to go do it and and I've done it yeah so and, and that's the that's the I go back and I look at it and I'm like well, I could have quit 27 times today and and not and that's the truly that's the important part right there oh 100 percent I mean I always say consistencies the biggest factor in whether any workout program is going to be successful. It doesn't matter. I could design the most perfect program for you, but if you don't do it, you don't do a consistency, you're not going to get any results. So it's that there's always going to be something there where you can use as an excuse, you know, and sometimes there's legitimate excuses, but day to day, you can always find really some reason not to do it. And so it's how we get through those excuses. And that's been part of what I try to provide it. And my job as a coach is to help, people get through those excuses and then once you've done it enough you kind of build that momentum into uh it's you know it's easy you know those things kind of just in one ear out the other and you know i'm, I'm focused i'm going to hit this workout today yep. living proof right there man 
So again, the uh, when we talk about the the app and the folks you had, you know, inter, international clientele, you have any anybody that we can say that's truly famous out there, so a celebrity of anybody that you got that we can. No, play? no famous. I've got a few. Uh, you know, I've worked with a few guys that are kind of bouncing around the Corn Ferry Tour. Uh, a few, you know, a lot of kind of mini tour guys. You know, younger guys that are still trying to make it. Uh, you know, a couple guys in the teaching business, you know, no real huge names, but, uh, to this point, I haven't kind of broken through to the, the, the real high level yet. Um, you know, I'd love to, to pick up a few, you know, guys on PGA tour, even, you know, some high level corn fairy tour guys, you know, some young guys that are trying to make it. Um, you know, I've got a few guys that are really, really well-known amateur golfers. Um, you know, at least in the amateur status, uh, had a lot of success. We got a, one guy that's had a good amateur career and he's in his mid forties and now he's setting the sights on senior tour. Nice. So we're trying to get him ready for that. So he hasn't played professionally to this point, but that's kind of his, his goal. Yeah. Um, so, uh, you know, and then I got a lot of juniors, a lot of just, you know, club golfers, weekend warriors that just want to be able to stay out there and take their friend's yeah. money. So, and that's, there you go. As long as you take that hot dog and a Coke at the end of the round, buddy, uh -huh. it's, it's gold. Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, you know, I was on the, I was on tour van for the corn Ferry, corn ferry to up here for the children's hospital in Columbus and, uh, met a couple of guys, some, you know, top tiers and some middle. And I go out there and I watch them strike balls on the range. And, you know, what we find out is that you know, the, the difference between the guy on that tour and the other tour, the distance is right here. Oh yeah. hundred percent. They, they're just trying to figure out, you know, they're convincing themselves that they belong. And the minute yeah. that they've done that, you've seen them, they break on there and they just, just go crazy on there. So that's been, that's, I mean, that's, that's the fun thing to just see it, just see the, the light bulb come on and watch them take off. That's Oh yeah. Part. That's great. I mean, you see it every season. There's, you know, young guys that just kind of come out of nowhere and then explode. Yep. So from a golfing standpoint, have you, are you a, a golfer by, by what, by hobby, by trade, whatever we call it? Oh, I, I am. I, I actually, I played basketball and baseball growing up played those sports through high school, never really picked up a golf club in college. You know, I'd go play with friends, but mostly it was go to drink beer and, and, and mess around. And then I went to physical therapy school in St. Augustine, Florida. Oh. Um, you know, I'm from Louisiana originally. We don't, you know, golf isn't the, the hottest thing around here. We'll say, but you know, I moved to Florida and there's a golf course on every corner there. And so I, it became kind of my getaway from school, my stress reliever, and so I kind of fell in love with it there and, you know, it, that's 15 years ago and it's been my, my main hobby. If I'm not working or with my kids, I'm usually on the golf course. Um, so I'm a, you know, I, I carry probably, I, I float around between a six and seven handicap right mm -hmm. now. Um, you know, and so, uh, I like to compete playing a few tournaments every now and then try to try to get out there once a week if I can, but, uh, you know, for, for, having a full-time job and two kids, I'm kind of happy with where my game is at right now. Oh yeah. You're in the, you're in that sweet spot. If you got to chase the kids around, cause they got all that other stuff. I yeah, see a lot yeah. of, uh, you see a lot of golf. I won't say decline, but they, they opt for the more important of the two things. Chasing, Correct. chasing, so, chasing yeah, the it, kids. <laughs> it's it, it, it slowly dropped down on the priority list over the years, but uh, I mean, I love it. I still love the game. It's still my, kind of stress reliever you know some people it might be a source of stress but for me i can get away on a golf course and oh, kind of yeah. at least for that time frame i'm forget about everything else and you know i still like to compete and even if it's just a you know for uh you know five dollar nassau with some friends or you know whatever you know it gives me a chance to still compete and and you know i love the constant search of better you know with golf you know that there's always something whether it's fitness or skill or technique short game whatever there's always something you could be trying to, to, to strive for. So we're, if somebody wanted to get with Dr. Guidry and get on this app or this program, how does somebody get a hold of you? Where can they go visit to see the, to get a hold of you? So I have a website. It's, it's Guidry, G U I D R Y golf and sport.com kind of just has my basic, basic information on my programs and what I do testimonials, things like that. 
and it's got you know different ways you can contact me there. Uh, email is John Paul, that's J O H N P A U L at Gidry, G U I D R Y P T dot com. Uh, I'm pretty active on all over social media, so Twitter, Barbells and Birdies is my handle, Instagram, Gidry Golf and Sport. Um, you know, uh, you can message me on there. I try to put out a lot of content on, on both of those channels. Uh, you know, I've got a YouTube channel, Gidry Golf and Sport as well. Um, it has a bunch of big exercise library, things like that. So, you know, if you message me, if you email me, if you contact me through my site, message me on, uh, any of the social media platforms, I'm usually pretty uh, quick to respond, uh, in either of those ways. There you go. So those are the ones, and I and I've emailed him a couple of times, and he stays he stays up late. <laughs> he, <laughs> I'm not, he stays, he stays you know, up late. I'm not very good at sleeping. I always say, but you know, I, although I preach the importance of sleep, and it is important in health, but you know, it's something I've been a challenge of mine. So I I, I usually feel like if I'm not going to sleep, I might as well be doing something productive at least. There you go. And all the people that that come and see you, I mean, I'm. What is what are some of the biggest challenges when somebody comes to see you? You know, where they say, I want to hit the ball. You know, I'm sure the number one priority is hit the ball further. So what what becomes like the number one challenge for you when you're dealing with somebody that just says, hey, I want more distance? So, you know, I it kind of depends on the person, the age group. So, you know, to generalize, you know, if, if my older golfers, let's say 40 and above, usually there's some definite mobility loss. Um, you know, I'm still a big proponent of strength. You know, if you look at, you know, I always say there's, there's, there's five components or five things we can manipulate to improve swing speed. So two are going to be on the golf side. So one is obviously technique and skill and that, you know, that's what you're going to go see a teaching professional. Two is going to be what you do, you know, fitting, making sure you're fit for proper equipment. Um, so that's going to be kind of outside of my realm. Inside my realm, it's going to be mobility and, and specifically how we rotate through our neck, our shoulders, our mid back, thoracic spine, and our hips and pelvis. You know, those are kind of the big areas rotationally for golf. Um, can we separate our upper and lower body? Strength and power. So that's really force development. Can we put force into the ground? Can we transfer that force through our trunk, our core? Can we deliver that force into the handle of the club with our, our upper body, our hands and arms? So having a snuff of a strength base in each of those areas, you know, we don't need to be power lifters, but I've met very few golfers that I would say are strong enough, you know, and, and most of the ones are, are 21 and, and have been lifting, you know, played in college, lifted in high school, you know, there's a background to that. Um, so, you know, I, I have maybe some higher standards than some other guys that do what I do from a strength standpoint. The other unspoken part of strength is if you look at the research, strength has one of the highest correlations with injury reduction, especially repetitive use injury, which is the number one way we get injured in golf. You know, we're not getting hit by a linebacker. We're not diving, falling on the ground. We're making a movement over and over again, and that repetitive stress can cause breakdown. Having strong, robust, resilient tissues, muscles, tendons, ligaments will help pre prevent that or minimize the chance of that breaking down, which is what, you know, injury essentially is. So there's a kind of a two-way benefit to strength, force production and injury reduction. Next box is power and speed. So power is basically our ability to express force quickly. So strength would be how heavy of a weight you can move. How would be how fast you can move a lighter weight? And so that would be like for you, you mentioned the medicine ball slams. We're trying to slam that medicine ball as hard as I can, move it as fast as I can. Now we're training power. We're training that fast twitch. And then on the very extreme end of that would be your speed training. So that's your super speed, your stack system, any like speed training with a ball and club. So now we've got the golf club or an implement that represents a golf club in our hand. And again, we're trying to move that thing as fast as we can, you know, and so most people are lacking in some degree in all of those areas, you know, the younger ones, especially juniors, they tend to be gumby and they move too much and they don't have any muscular control because they're weak. You know, like I said, the, the older players tend to be more 
some weakness and then now we bring in a mobility issue and they just can't turn like they want to um things like that i've had maybe a handful of guys where I you said speed training is probably a waste of time and again all those guys were playing professionally and you know they were maxing out their speed for their physical capabilities so they needed to get stronger to create more speed but most people can benefit from some degree of speed training as well so uh, when you get we talked about you know the program and i don't want to get into specifics because that's in you know inside your inside your box with for and each person's probably going to be a little different However, is, is there any, when, as we were talking before, is there, do you have a favored, uh, a favored exercise that, that you like to do or that you like to give to people for that? That's a big time result giver. So, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll give you one kind of for each area. So for mobility, uh, you mentioned that one, the, the leg drops, I call it disassociation drill. You know, that's one of my favorite you know, open books is another one, which is the one on your side where you're kind of moving back and forth. Those kind of check a lot of boxes. Strength, lower body strength, which kind of, you know, something we'll be getting into a little bit down the road more. Uh, the deadlifts, specifically a trap bar deadlift, if you're familiar with that implement. But just mm -hmm. kind of bang for your buck, improving our ability to put force into the ground. That's probably the, the, the that or a split squat or probably the number one upper body pull-ups or any type of pulling pull down rows exercise bench press actually surprisingly has one of the highest correlations with swing speed so people with okay. that can bench press more weight uh you know in the studies they've done can swing the club faster and you know that used to be kind of a no-no golfers don't bench press because it kills mobility well now we know it doesn't actually have any negative effect on mobility but it has a positive effect on on uh improving swing speed you know, so those are kind of big ones in the upper body, uh, you know, power jumps, medicine ball throws, medicine ball slams, you know, those kind of cover all your bases. I was just uh, going to say one of my favorite, one of my favorites for that is that jump that you have us doing where you, and, and isn't it, of course it's the jump, but the bigger part is the catching yourself when you come back. Yeah. And, and that, and I was like, after about, you know, you, I did about, I got to the first time around, I was just trying to figure out how I was supposed to, you know, get the thing done correctly. And after I got through it and I, and I got done and I said, I was like, oh, there it is. About, about 30 minutes later, I'm going, oh, there it is. Oh, there it is. <laughs> and I said, better go ahead. And then when I hit some balls, and it was just amazing how the difference is in the, and being able to push. Yeah. Right? Being able yeah. to push is just, it makes a difference. It really, really does. Yeah, I mean, you need that strength, you need that magnitude of force, um, and then you need that quickness. That's where that jump gives. That's where that dynamic training gives you is be able to, as you know, as we say, get in and out of the ground as quick as you can with as much force as you can. You know, and, and when you look at ground force in the golf swing, you know, vertical force, you know, there's some pretty high correlations with your ability to do that in swing speed. That's what it is. It's, you know, how can we get in the ground? How can we get out of it? You know, how hard can we do it? How quickly can we do it? And then from a, the technique side, do we sequence it correctly? Um, but you have to have some of the physical abilities to do those things for it to then go into the golf swing. Very good. So guys and gals, this is the, you know, this is the beginning start, the beginning of all these trainings, you know, it, it, and I am probably the classic guy of just exactly of what Dr. John Paul was talking about is, getting somebody to get them in there and kick them in the butt to make things go. And, and it's happening. I'm a, right now in the, going into week four, I mean, I'm a believer already. So I, if you get an opportunity, visit him on the website and, and check in and just see if it's something for you, you know, but I can, I can assure you based on what I'm seeing right now, uh, you know, everybody's like, Oh, you don't need all. No, you need that. You need that. And I'm watching, and I, and I <laughs> bring it in, I fit a guy who was 83 years old and I was watching him and, uh, what had happened. And I fit him like 15 years ago and he came back in and we got to talking and he had a, uh, he had a, he had a bout with cancer and a neat thing. And I said, well, you know, he lost a little bit of weight. And I said, well, what's the biggest thing that's been helping you? He said, dude, the fact that I can turn and he says, I got all this mobility. 
83 years old, still poking a driver out to 200 yards. And mm -hmm. I'm like, if that's not, if that's not like the example right there of what this can do, because he does, he goes and he works out and he does his thing and he keeps himself, keeps himself going. And, and, uh, and of course I know his son is my age and, and, uh, and then his, and then his son, his grandson, I fed him as well. And I said, so uh, how, how often do you get into your son's back pocket when you're golfing? Mm -hmm. And he goes, well, we, when it starts getting close, I'll start getting inside his head first. And then I can get inside his wallet, <laughs> <laughs> which, but the thing is that he's staying close and that, that's, yeah. that is really saying something. So that's a lot of fun. So that was, <laughs> but that's a lot of neat stuff. So Dr. John Paul, if you don't mind, we're going to, uh, we can revisit, do another revisit of this thing in about three or four weeks. And we'll yeah, talk absolutely. about some other, you know, I'm sure I'm going to get questions and we'll, we'll throw those up there and, and we'll go from there. Let's do it. All right. One more time, guys, the, Dr. John, if you want to tell them where, where they can get you on the website, the email, the Instagrams, all that stuff, we got to give them another shout out of where, where to get a hold of you. All right. So my website is, is Gidry, G U I D R Y golf and sport.com. Email is John Paul, J O H N P A U L at Gidry, G U I D R Y P T.com. Uh, Instagram, Gidry golf and sport, uh, Twitter, barbells and birdie, reach out to me on there, email me. I have some links on my website. You can contact me or you can even set up a free, uh, a call just to kind of chat and learn more. Um, plenty of ways to get in touch with me for sure. And there you go, guys. Recommend it highly to this point. I mean, what can it hurt, right? What can, <laughs> I mean, what can it hurt other than not get hurt? You know, that's yeah. the, the, you know, in, in my age category, that's all I'm, it's all I hear people, you, you see this and you see this and you walk and you're like, uh, I just, you know, I want to do this until I'm 80 for three years old yeah. and, and get going. So that's awesome. So, okay, guys. So again, keep in, keep in touch, keep watching this thing and let's go see what my results are. All right. That's quite a conversation. And this is probably one of the most down to earth people I've ever met as far as, you know, he, he talks about himself and he talks about, you know, things that we need to do and why we need to do them. And in the program that we're talking about, you know, I never once in my whole life thought that something this automated or something like this would be for me. I'm not of that generation that does very well with this. And this thing is pretty impressive. I, I like the idea that I'm being talked to regularly. I didn't think that would work out, but it works out grand. And with these, you know, hey, tell me what you think so I can make some changes. Here's the notifications that you get on there. And so every day I check, this is the one thing I do, it's part of my routine now. I check the calendar, see what I've got to do, and I go do it. That's it. And it's, it's been pretty good. And then you put your stats in. It's kind of fun to be able to say, yep, I got all this done. So it, it creates this desire to want to keep going, the desire to keep wanting to do it and not backsliding. And that's the, and that's the thing. So week four, what were the results? And talk about backsliding. I, uh, I missed one day. I missed one day last week. A lot of work was happening. So uh, is an excuse. Yeah, it's, all it is is an excuse. Uh, I, I, I put on extra workouts at the end to try and make up for it. But as the results would bear out, so we talk about the standard 8-iron, the max 8-iron, standard driver, max driver, right? So, all right, last week we were, last week we were talking about the standard 8-iron. It's like 164, 165, or yeah, 164, 165 carry total. And, uh, and right around 91 and some change. This week, I was a little slower in the swing speed. However, uh, I was hitting the middle of the golf ball or golf club again, and I got 167, 168, and that's standard. That's pretty good, right? That's pretty good for me. That's pretty good. Now, maxed out, right? The maxed out last week. Last week, last week, the max was 179 or 178, 178, 179, 178, 178. All right, got a lot of good spin. This week, 179, 180. So a little bit of improvement on the maxed out, right? And again, it was all about better quality of hit. All right, so on the driver. All right, the driver I went backwards on. The uh, last week I was, 
All right, last week I was 245, 255. This week I'm 242, 251. Uh, swing speed just wasn't there. I just, just didn't rate. So I'm kind of this up and down kind of thing, which when you're into week four, okay. Now, in, in maxed out, maxed out I was at 260. And then and maxed out I went to 252 to 261. So I was hitting the ball a little bit more correctly. I wasn't coming down on it. I think that had a lot to do with at the point where I was doing the workout. So I've kind of changed. I gave myself a rest before I joined, uh, jumped back in there. So again, quality of hit went up. Eight irons looking good. Driver needs some work, and we're going to work on that. So again, if you have any questions about the workouts or anything, please follow us along. Put them in the show notes below, and uh, I will certainly answer it. Now, if you're looking over here, you're going to see, uh, let's see, over my left... Would it be my left as I'm looking at it? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so over here, you're going to see there's going to be a McGolf symbol, and that's for subscribing. And down here is a video that they're going to want you to talk, or uh, that YouTube will want you to look at that keeps you on the channel. Please take a look if it interests you. The other one is, is that the uh, coming up on the next one, because I, I filmed this one a week ahead, uh, the results are very, very good. All right, I, I stayed with it. Got in the program, de dedicated quite a bit to it, and the results show. So stay with us next week on Saturday and, and see what happens on, on golf workouts with McGolf. How about that? Golf workouts. And as always, guys, let's see your scores go low.